Today we're making some new Victorian home decor. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. First project is a hanging candle lamp. So this is a thrift piece that I picked up. It's got a little damage but you know we can work on it plus it's got a little orangey undertone and I'm gonna work on that a bit. Show you how you can change that shiny stuff up. It's about 16 inches just to give you an idea. I'm going to use the tubing that came with a print that I recently did on a video. Some antiquing wax and a brush. Chippy brush, of course. Sanding products, so you can use a sanding block, a finger sander, or a sanding machine. Also going to use some of this wire and it is in a silverish color, but it really won't matter because you're not going to see it. Some lights that will fit in that tube. My wire cutters. Any type you have will work. And then this is the skeleton from a lampshade. I'm going to take this curtain ring and put this on top because we need to change the shape. I'm going to just take off the little hanging piece here. I get these pieces at the thrift store in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. I love the wooden ones because they are multi-purpose for a lot of things. I'm going to add some E6000 right on those little cross pieces. And you see, if we left this this way, then we would have, once we started wrapping it, we would have almost a triangular or very angular shape. And I want this to maintain a more of a rounded look. So you'll see what I mean as we start to work on this. I'm going to give that just a few minutes for the E6000 to cling a little bit. Then I'm going to gently flip it over and just reinforce it with some Gorilla Glue on the back. I don't want this to come apart because we're going to be pulling quite a bit on those pieces. Now this is going to round this all out. It's going to change it. So we're not going to be worried about that inner ring anymore. We've now changed the contour of this lamp to go between the wooden piece and that bottom metal piece of the frame. I'm going to be cutting little pieces of this wire to go around in between the original three cross pieces that we have there. So those pieces that go up and down, I'm going to add more of those by just creating some with this wire. I'm going to try to center it between each one of the little sections, and there are three sections, so we're going to do three wires. I'm going to pull it up and then twist it around both the wire on the inside and the wooden piece. This is going to give a little more security also to that wooden piece that's on top to make sure that nothing pops loose when we are tugging around on this, putting on the wires. I just chose to start on the bottom, but you know, you could probably start on the top if you wanted to do that. It really doesn't matter. And I'm trying to make sure that I've got it centered pretty much right between the bars that go up and down that are original to the skeleton of this lamp piece. Now, if you have uh, a little piece like this, all you have to do is peel the paper off or the covering off, cut it off, get some scissors. This happened to have been uh, paper and I just peeled it all off. Same thing here. Now, you don't have to find pieces like this at the thrift store, and you don't have to go to the store to get them. You may have perhaps an old uh, ceiling fan that might have had something like this on it that you could take apart. You can repurpose it. You can pick up stuff like this at a garage sale, maybe. Okay, so now we have our extra section. So now we have six little pieces that are going to support when we put our lampshade together. So I'm going to take some of this satin ribbon. You really can use any type of ribbon you have, but I don't believe I would go any thinner or thicker with that. I'm going to use some of this beautiful paper that comes from Dollar Tree. And that's going to be the outside, but this is going to be the inside framework. I'm using white here because, for one, we don't want that contact paper that we're going to use on top. We don't want to be able to see what is underneath it, so I don't want to use a black. Also using white so that the light that shines through here, now this is going to be more of a mood lighting. This is not super bright, okay? It's not super bright. If that's what you're looking for, this might not be the project that, you know, that you're looking for, but 
To me, with Victorian decor, everything is sort of moody and darker anyway, more rich and warm looking. So we're going to try to keep that look up by following that style. Now I started my ribbon on the inside. I went ahead and cut it off the spool because we're going to have to loop up and through the bottom on the inside and then through the top and wrap around. There's 18 feet on each one of these spools of ribbon. I used about a spool and a half. When I wrap, I'm going to get the top pieces overlapping closer, closer together in the bottom, I'm going to space out a little bit where they're just barely touching. This is going to give us the, the length that we need to go all the way down and around the frame without having everything go sideways. I'm going to try to keep it at the same shape. So you see what I'm doing here? You see how the shape is? The ribbon is tighter at the top or closer together overlapped on the top. And then as you go outward toward the bottom, it's just barely touching one another. See? And we're gonna do this all the way around. This is how it looks when it's done. And you're just gonna cut it off when you get back to your original spot and then glue it under. I'm going to grab that contact, pa contact paper. Oh my goodness, y'all. Too much coffee? Maybe not enough. I'm gonna trim this down. And there's no exact way for me to tell you how to cut a cone. Um, if you know another technique other than just rolling it around, then feel free to do it this way. But this has just worked for me. I've done a lot of Tussie Mussies, and they are also Victorian. So you can find those in my uh, videos on my channel. But the, the routine is pretty similar, only you're using that lampshade as your kind of like a template to know how big you need to cut it. And as I roll it, as long as it overlaps, I'm just going to be cutting off excess that I don't think I'm going to need. And I added a little piece of tape to hold it in place while I trim it down. So I'm just trimming this bottom down and I'm going to cut as close as I can to that ribbon by just laying my scissor or my shears on the edge to cut it straight once I get to a comfortable place. I'm going to do the same thing on the top. On the top, I'm just going to cut down into it and then lay the scissors down and just go around. And I was afraid I might accidentally cut off too much, so I'm just trimming a little at a time as I go to make sure that I don't do that. Once I get the right length on here, I'm going to go ahead and peel the backing off. Because we've removed all that excess, right? And you see, even here, it's kind of sticking a little bit. I'm just going to fix that. Not a problem. We're just going to keep going. The contact paper is kind of thin. I mean, it's not made for upholstery, obviously. So, you know, it's not going to be super thick. But the print on this is so beautiful. And I've used it before in other projects. So I know, I know the results you can get from this. And it's so pretty. All right. So I'm just going to cut this down a little bit. And you should always cut away from yourself. I don't know what I was doing on this day. You know, you have those days. You're just kind of off the game a little bit. I was kind of off the game a little bit. It seemed like every project, every project that I did that day was giving me fits. So, you know, just do the best you can and work with it. Now I'm going to lay it down on here and I'm going to wrap it around. So now you understand why we put that ribbon underneath so that this contact paper has something firm and solid to stick to. So that's what I'm doing. I'm pressing down slightly as I roll it over to make sure the contact paper fits on, overlaps onto itself to hold it in place and that it is sticking down on the ribbon fabric underneath. So now we can trim it up exactly nice and clean on the top and the bottom. Careful not to cut your ribbon now because that's, that's your framework. We don't want to mess up anything that we took all that time to do. Just make it nice and clean. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom. I have never done a lampshade before. Um, and I'm not professional with it. So, you know, this is just the way I did it. You know, my videos are for inspiration. I want to show you how you can do things that are nice and bring you joy in your home. But, you know, where you don't have to go to a store and spend a fortune. You would not believe some of the prices of the things that I see offered in stores 
compared to something you can do yourself at home. And I absolutely love this little candle lamp and I hope that you're gonna to love it too. So stay with me here. Now I'm going across my original framework underneath and pressing down just to make sure that everything stays in place. And what a lovely little shade this is. I like this very much. Using a little cool temperature glue, I'm gonna go around the edges to seal the little space that is between the contact paper and the fabric. You can skip this part if your contact paper is something that is a lot more sticky than this or perhaps a little thicker that you can work with. Uh, yes, you could if you wanted to wrap this paper around the top and into just kind of tuck it in, but I don't want it like that. I want the white on the top. Now I'm going to give you some options. So. As far as lace trim, you can choose white, you can choose black, you can do something very streamlined, or you can do like I did and you can just do a little extra. So this is the beautiful piece that I chose. Love it. I think it's very Victorian looking, perhaps a little goth. And I'm going to add this around the edge. Now I'm going to start in the back. Make sure that your edge is turned correctly too. There's like a thread running through here where it is attached and you want that on the back. I want the pretty, all the black side on the front. I don't want to see the stitching on it. So I'm just going to add a little hot glue at the seam on the back where the contact paper overlaps. And then I'm going to go around cool temp glue and I'm going to go around and add right on that line the seam up there on the edge of that beautiful lacy trim. Carefully continue around and you know protect your fingers so if you need to put your finger protectors on to do this surely do that especially if you have a very thin piece of trim because it'll go right through it and you'll burn your hands and we don't want that. All right, so I'm going to continue around till we're back to our original spot. Try to keep your line nice and straight and even all the way around. That's going to be the difference between being a craft and a beautiful piece of home decor. Overlap just very slightly and then you're going to trim off your excess. Now the seam and the back is all going to go to the back of the candle. So you're really not going to see much of what's going on here. So don't worry if you don't do the most perfect job on it. Love the look of this. Now I feel like I want to add this little piece right on the top. I'll just measure it and cut it off. And this one's kind of like elastic. It's really kind of stretchy. It's really nice. So we're on the back side again. And we're going to add a little glue. And go around right there now there's two pieces of lace and a solid piece of fabric in the middle and i'm going to kind of balance it where the the little meshy parts or the edge part are sticking up just a little bit and this solid piece goes right there over the edge where the contact paper meets the beautiful satin ribbon it extends the frame it's going to make this lampshade look a little bit larger and it's just, it's very elegant to me. Very pretty. You could use anything you want, though. Anything you, anything you want. You could even use, like, a, if you don't want to use contact paper, you could even use a wrapping paper if you had something pretty you wanted to use. All right, so now our edges are nice. No bulkiness. We're going to add some pearls to this. Now, I got mine from Timu, but you can get half rounds anywhere. These are... This came in a package that had several different sizes of half round pearls. And I'm going to use those carefully. Add a little hot glue and then every other little piece of this trim that drops down, I'm going to sandwich just the tip right between two of these. So it almost looks like it is through the fabric or made into the fabric. So every other one. You could do every one. You could do, you could put little pearl pieces or beads anywhere you want to on this to give it a little extra flair. But I think this is 
so pretty the end result of this is just really really pretty and just keep in mind y'all at the end of my videos is where you can get a closer look of all of the items uh, finished now look at that it gives a little weight to it it's got that pretty little pearl edge I really like this very very much so now let's work on the candle stick it's got some damage here it is wood but it's got quite a bit of damage just on this part so we're going to just clean this part up for sure i'm going to take my little sander here i've got i think an 80 grit paper and i'm going to go right in there and take all that off this is an old candlestick uh, you can kind of tell by the finish that some of the pieces that i get at the thrift store they almost have like a shellac or a varnish on them and they just don't sand as well as things do that are more recent uh, that's my opinion because that stuff is really really thick and it can be really hard to get through plus as it ages it turns that orangey yellow color that i just don't care for in my own home but you know make it your own definitely make it your own that's that's what it's all about so as i was doing this i had thought in the beginning i would leave the cup on the candle here but then i decided no let's just take it off it is screwed down and there's a metal cup that it is screwed into the wooden piece we're just going to remove it and then you can screw this right off it wasn't even glued down it was just screwed on then i'll take this and sand it all down too because i want all of this piece to be the same finish go around and around and get all that off now to address the shininess here i'm going to sand all of this to the point where most of this shine is knocked off of it because that's where that yellowish orange is and we don't want that there for a victorian look i think a darker wood tone is going to be the better option so i know that i'm going to use this tube as the light tubing right i am going to first need to make a hole in here that's going to fit over the original hole or the original little peg that's up there on the top so using a wide jumbo glue tip glue gun tip i just made a hole and then it fit perfectly on there i'll flood it with a little bit of glue and this is gorilla glue in this glue gun and i will hold it there and let that glue set up and that's going to work great for that so once i have fit through the roughness and the orange on here you can still it you can see it's still got a lot of shine in it but we're going to take it down with this antiquing wax i'm going to go completely all over this entire thing with the antiquing wax now with antiquing wax if you put it on thick and you leave it it will dry that color it will be perfectly dark just like that beautiful rich, rich brown color but if you choose to make it a little bit lighter, you can wipe it back off before it dries. So you can apply it and then wipe it off, or you can use something like a wet, a wet paper towel, a wet cloth, and uh, wipe it back. But you see how dark that was. It was perfect. So now a part of the video is missing, but what I did was decide how much length I would need to fit inside of the lampshade. And I'm cutting into this plastic and then cutting the little flaps away right at the height that I think I would need it. This is easy to do. Just get your good sharp utility scissors or what you have and cut through it. You could probably use a utility knife here too. Just be very careful. All right, so I'm gonna take the strand out. I'm gonna take the little protector out of here I've unwound my little strand of lights. I see how deep that tube is, and then that's how deep I want to make the loops of this because we're going to be stuffing this down in there, and I want to make sure everything fits. So I'm just going round and round using the last piece to measure the next piece. Round and round and round, back and forth until this entire piece fits in here. You can use cork lights for this too. Just keep in mind, the more light you have on your strand, the brighter your light is generally going to be. And these are LED lights. They do not have a big battery pack on them. Mine came in a 10 pack, I think, from Timu. Um, but you can get, you know, fairy lights at Dollar Tree. But like I said, they're just not going to be as bright because you're not going to have as many strands in there. So look how bright that is. Now, I did make a boo-boo in the video and 
the lights are not going to look as bright as they would look in the end piece because I accidentally left my lights on and they started to dim. You know, they just don't last forever. And when you leave them on overnight, they get kind of dim. But you see, you can see how this is going to look, right? Very pretty. Very pretty mood lighting. You're not going to read a book by it, but it's very pretty. Mondays and Thursdays at 6 o'clock are my new videos. I'll see you in the comments. The next project is going to be a wall storage piece. Very exciting. So you see my little thrifted piece here. We're also going to need paint brushes. I'm going to have a foam and a chippy brush. I'm going to need black paint. I do switch this over to a matte black paint. We're going to use walnut wood tint. We're going to use some type of a wax to seal it with. A screwdriver or a drill with a screw bit. And we're going to be using some sanding tools. These I took off of another project I did, but we're going to use these and the hardware that goes to them. There are four screws total. Let's take a look at this box that I thrifted. This little storage piece. Very shiny, very orangey. Like I said, you can tell that this is outdated and it just needs a little facelift and we are really going to make this thing come back to life. It's got like a brassy painted on cover. It's not real brass. Nobody panic. We're going to start by removing the hardware. So just going to dry, you're going to get a screw gun or you're going to get your screwdriver and we're just going to remove the hardware. I had somebody comment recently that they wished that I would use items in my videos that they could actually find. And I want you to understand when you come to this channel that there are going to be thrift pieces. And you are going to get some pieces that, you know, you get from Dollar Tree and such. So, what I'm telling you, these are not exact tutorials when I do these thrift pieces because everybody's, or everybody's thrift store is different. What you find is going to be different. When you see these, it's for inspiration, right? Okay, just understand that because I don't want anybody to come here and feel disappointed. All right, so now I'm gonna go around here and clean it all up. We've removed the hardware, I'm gonna clean it up. I'm looking for any spots on here that need to be possibly sanded more than others. I'm looking at uh, removing my hardware. And y'all, I'm using a cheese knife to take this off. Why? Because it was available. It was available and it fits perfectly in the screw back and it fits inside of the drawer so I can take the hardware off. We're gonna take this little handle off and the handles that I showed you before, we're gonna be adding one of those instead. So we'll put these aside because there may be another project we can use this on. These flimsy little, I think these are called sawtooth hangers. We're gonna take these off. And in the end, you can put whatever piece you want on there because you get to determine whether you want it to be upright or upside down, can you believe you want to be able to use this project either way? So I'm going to sand this down. Now I started off with my hand sander. There was so many layers on here, y'all could not do it. I had to go outside and get my sander. But you see here, what we're focusing on is getting down in every one of those little cracks, every one of those layers. There are like three lips or steps on the back of this on this trim and I want to make sure I get into each one there was the thickest thickest coat of stuff in here it was very difficult so I tried to remove it as best I could with my sander outside then I used a vacuum and now I'm going to use just a dry cloth to wipe that excess off then I will clean it off with a baby wipe and allow all of the pieces to dry all right, so now we need to fill this hole because we're not going to be using that anymore. I'm going to just take a little piece of tape and cover that hole on the back. And you see, it's just covered, just a little painter tape. Then I'm going to use some wood glue, use a little stick, and go right down in that opening. I have a little piece of a dowel. Y'all don't know what this is. These little pegs, I think they're for furniture anyway, but I find them, like I said, I've collected so much of this stuff through my years of going through the thrift stores that I, I just have it on hand. I'm gonna just hammer it down into the hole just a little bit, just tapping it down. I don't wanna split the wood or you know cause any problem. 
I'm using my little silicone spatula to remove the excess. Wipe it clean. And then this, it, this wood is so, I don't know, the pores are kind of open. It's like a really light wood, but it makes a really good plug for this wood. So I thought it would be great. I'm just using my little cutters here just to cut this down as far as I can. I'll tap a little bit more and I'm doing this gently, y'all. I don't want to dislodge anything or damage that drawer. Once I get it down as far as I can, I'll just tap it a little more and then I can sand it down just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna start putting on this wood tint. This is like a stain. Please put your gloves on. I've still got that stain on my knuckles from a few days ago. Yeah, it doesn't have the smell that a stain would have. So you can use it indoors. I can, You can barely smell this stuff. Um, I really like it. I've used it on a lot of projects. It seriously changes the appearance of your wood into something so much richer. You can already see how much darker this is compared to the way that it was that orangey color. That honey color that used to be very popular, but I don't know, that was what, in the 80s probably? And that look is just not popular right now. It's that's not not the thing right now, right? And we're doing Victorian, so we want to go back to that old dark wood, okay? So I'm using the sponge brush because I really want to get into those open pores of that wood where we sanded everything down. It's just going to soak in there and just give it that beautiful, rich, dark look. I've spray painted the metal pieces here and allowed those to dry. You can see that it's a matte finish. lovely. I'm going to measure off and just put some little dots on here where I'm going to put my new hardware. I'll grab my drill, making sure that the bit is just a little bit larger than the hardware or the screw that's going to go back through here so that it fits in easily. I'm going to screw down into there and then put it in reverse and come back out that same spot. I don't want to split that wood. And then we'll do the other side. Be careful when you try to wipe sawdust away because you don't want to end up getting a splinter in your hand. Um, yeah, don't ask me how I know, but I know. All right, so we're gonna put the hardware on there. We're gonna screw these screws in. I just pushed them through the back and then put the handle on and we're gonna just screw that back down. I've got this little stubby screwdriver here. Look at my knuckles, y'all. Oh, I'm always covered in paint. Nobody's ever surprised when they see me to see me in paint. Now, nice. So, I love that bronzy look. You know that I love that bronzy look. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know I love Rich Espresso. This beautiful, lovely color. I love putting it over black. I have done it in so many videos because I cannot get enough of this for my own personal look it's just so pretty but if you don't like the espresso you can use a gold you can use a muted gold you can use brush gold you can use a silver whatever color that you want to use that is a metallic type color okay you don't have to do it my way like i said it's inspiration i happen to love the warmth of it myself though so i use it a lot so you should know how to do this technique by now so the chippy brush is what I'm using and I go into the paint and then take most of the paint back off. Now I wanna show you the difference. Do you see the difference in that? So now we're gonna go over the other one and we're gonna do that. Try to get it as similar to the other side as possible. They won't be facing each other, they'll be facing away, so you won't notice that much. But again, if you're going for a high-end look, all these little extra details are things that don't take very much more time, but really make a difference in the look. So then I put them side by side and make sure that everything looks very similar. Beautiful, right? What a difference a little paint makes. So, now that we've got everything stained and dried, all of these pieces are dry now, we're gonna put the beautiful pieces back on the sides. I'm gonna grab those original screws and we'll go right back in the same holes that were already there. All the way down, you don't wanna over tighten. 
Okay, then I'm gonna grab that other smaller piece, set that underneath, and put those back in. Nice. We'll flip it over and do the other side. Now I'm just going to go back over this with a little bit of that bronzy paint. You could also do black there if you would like to so that that's not as noticeable. I also added another bar on the bottom, that little piece of hardware. You see where I added it? Now, if you put the drawer in this way, you can have this sitting on your table as a little organizational piece. It would be very pretty to put your books on or some decor on, which I'll show you in the end. Or if you want to flip this over, you can turn the drawer the other direction and hang it on the wall like this. Use it as a shelf. You can put something on the wide part of the top and you could put something on the little bottom part. Now I'm going to use my own wood conditioner rather than using the other one. I will link the video where I make this. It is very nice, natural, easy to make, and it will last a long time. You see that beautiful sheen? We're going to add this on top of that wood. I'm going to use a cheesecloth for this or a flour sack towel. You can get them at Dollar Tree and cut them into pieces. I'm just going to kind of ball it up and put my fingers in there so that I have a way to apply it. And I'll go over all of that wood tint, all of the wood on here with this to give it a beautiful shine. Now we're going to do the whole thing and then you can wait about 24 hours and come back in and just kind of buff it out with a little bit of a, well, with a dry piece of cloth. Use lint-free cloth though. Don't, you don't want to use a paper towel for this because it will snag on any little piece of anything. You want to go over the entire thing, even the inside of the drawer, because you want this to look, again, high-end. You want it to be very pretty, a very nice piece of furniture that you can use for years. Now look at the dark beautifulness of that wood now without all of that orange showing, without all of that yellowish orange. I think that's made a huge difference on this piece, and I hope that you like it. And I hope that you feel inspired. Now, I'm not going to do the inside of the drawer because that's just, nobody's going in there, right? Nobody's going in there. Think of all the things you could put on this as a shelf or how you would decorate this if you set it on a tabletop. It would just really be beautiful. When you're doing this in the larger areas, be sure you're using like a circular motion and then finish it off going with the grain of the wood in any areas that it is applicable. I love doing this. I love my job and I'm so grateful for y'all who come to my channel repeatedly over and over again to watch my videos and give me support because it helps me so much and my level of crafting has changed so much from the years. It's more of, I guess you could say artistry now than just crafts. And I'm so proud of the projects that I'm bringing y'all now. I put a lot of work and thought and effort into them and I know that you can do the same thing. Thank you for supporting me to all of my magic makers. My channel members really help get the work done so that everyone else can watch it for free. Our rose bundle canvas is gonna be next. This is perhaps the easiest project. So this is a picture that I thrifted and it used to be hanging in my daughter's room, but she's a big girl now. She doesn't need it. I'm going to take some screws, I'm going to, I mean some tools, I've got an awl, some things that I'm going to use to pull staples, and these beautiful clings that came from Timu. Three big pieces and bunches of butterflies. They are beautiful. This is not a sponsored video, y'all. You can get your clings anywhere. You can get wall decor stickers from Dollar Tree. All right, so now we have to pull these out and that's why I chose these little wire cutters because they have a sharp point. I can get down into that and pull it out. So I'm gonna pull out into the staples all the way around and I'll use that all to help when I need the help. I'm not gonna reuse the canvas, so if it gets a hole in it, that's okay. I'm gonna hang on to these original hangers for a future project. 
They come off easily and they attach easily. Just gonna take them apart. They're in great shape. Then I'm just simply gonna peel off that outer layer and we are going to use this frame. We're gonna cut down a piece of cardboard or if you have a piece of something big enough to cover the whole frame, you can cover the entire frame. But I wanna go on the inside and we're gonna do something special with the outside of this frame. So you can see the measurements here. But I'm gonna take those measurements and I'm gonna go right down this piece of paper. Trying to make sure that I get it as close as possible. All the way down. Then we'll make a line across to connect those dots and get our scissors and cut this all the way out. All right, I'm gonna use some little wood pieces here. These came from Dollar Tree. You can get them in a package in the crafter square. And these are gonna be some extra supports that we're gonna use so that we can flip our piece of paper or image or whatever you want to call it at this point over and glue it down. So this is the back side of the frame and I'm going to put glue, a little bit of glue on each little side here. I ran out of glue in the other one and I'm going to place it down in each of the corners. I'm laying it flat down on the table upside down like I said because I want to make sure that this is flat going all the way to the table and in the corner. Don't use too much glue because too much glue you're going to end up leaking down onto the table and it'll glue down to the table. All right, I'm just making sure everything is secure and it is. And then we can flip it over and each of those little pieces are going to be supports. I decided to add pieces right in the middle as well. So we're back to the back side and I'm adding the little metal pieces to help hold this up and support it from the um, front. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces on there. I'm going to put the piece of paper on top. It's going to fit perfectly. And there'll be just an area here where we're going to add a little trim. I love this beautiful moss chalk paint. It looks great with the print here. The greenery in the prints. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this down on this. This is not wood. This is like a uh, maybe MDF. It's really a porous, soft type. Mm, I'm, not sure, I'm not entirely sure, but we're going to use a crackle method here, and I ended up having to distress this a little bit differently than just the crackle because this did not perform like a crackle, but you'll see what I mean. You know, I tell y'all, there are things that happen in crafting. You're not always sure. Now we got sandstone. And some Elmer's glue, a brush, and a little bowl. You're not always sure necessarily. You just take a chance with crafting, and sometimes it's not what you expected it to be. Well, the crackle method did not do, it didn't perform as well. Now, I've done crackle method before, and I've done it with Elmer's glue before. I have done it with chalk paint. So, I'm not exactly sure what happened here. If it was just soaking in, where with a piece of wood, it doesn't soak in as far. But it wasn't giving me the look I wanted. But I'm going to show you how to do it anyway in the event that you want to use the same method to do yours. Because it turned out wonderful. It really did. So you put the glue on pretty thickly. And you're going to, as it is still wet, you're going to drag your lighter layer uh, and your lighter layer and your lighter color of paint across it. Only going in one direction. Try not to overlap too much um, to get your paint down. I should have been using a chippy brush here, but I did not. We're going to go all the way around, and then I'm going to grab my, my heat gun, and I'm going to go over this to help it begin to crackle. Now, in the lightest spots, it did have a very light streaking of a crackle. No big crackles, but like light separation of the paint, and I just could not get it the way I wanted it to get. And I mean, I went over this thing drying it forever. But I couldn't get it to do right, so let me show you what I did. See, just a little bit, but then there's bubbled areas that just bubbled and they never popped. They never made a crackle. So I got my little 
so you can fix it. I got a little knife here. This is actually a cheese knife that I use as a scraper in all my tools. Yeah, cheese knife because I have small hands. It works perfect. And I'm going to go over here and just knock all of those bubbles off. I'm just going to sand or push right through them. I'm just going to go through them and chip it off. This is going to give it a chippy look where I have a little bit of crackle in here. I have some chippiness in here and it looks, it ended up looking gorgeous in my opinion. But you know, you can decide what you think about this. Now the reason I put this in a video with Victorian inspired pieces is because of the print that I'm using because of the roses and the chain and the key that is on this. It is not necessarily something that is going to make a set with these three things and I often try to make things that will go together well but if you like the shabby chic or the lighter Victorian type things then this project is going to be perfect for you. So what do we, on this channel, we want to make something for everybody, right? So we're going to show you everything that you could possibly do. If you don't like the colors that I'm using, use different colors. You could use black and gray and do it with black and gray. Or you could do white under and black on the top or vice versa. Use your imagination, take the inspiration, right? Now I'm using my awl and I'm just scratching it up and I'm pushing the point through in some areas to make it look just old, old and crackled. As much damage as I can possibly do on this thing, I am doing. I'm also going to take my finger sander and go over it in places too, where the crackles start. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get the evenness and the look of this that I really like. You could also use a piece of uh, maybe some wall decor that you could put over maybe a black paper. You know, just use your imagination as to what you could do and how you could use this. And that's how it's going to look. Now we're going to also have to work on the sides. So we're going to address the sides here. I'm going to add the glue here. So you get a closer look of how you're going to do this. Add your glue. Before it even has a chance to dry. This time I'm using a chippy brush. I'm going to streak some of that on there. Just trying to see if it makes a difference. If I go a lot lighter and with a larger chippy brush. It did not make a difference. It did the exact same thing as before. So, we're going to go back and do the same thing here. All those little areas, I'm going to go over it with my little knife here, and I'm going to scratch it up. I'm going to take the bubbles off, get sand a little bit, get that all, drag some lines through it. Make it look like this frame has been around for a hundred plus years. And now I'm going to go over all of that edging and just bite through all of the paint back down to the bottom. Now I'm going to choose a print that I like. I want to have a couple of butterflies in there, so I'm going to use this center print for this one. I'll grab those butterflies. I'm going to carefully peel this off. And now the good thing I've experienced is, see how it's rolled back on itself? I can easily gently pull that up. Put it on the back of my hand. Now, I have very small hands, y'all. Wear a size 5 ring. If I can do this, I know you can. Okay, we're going to gently lift it. Then I'm going to find my center. And then let that heaviest part or the middle part of that sort of drop down. And carefully use my fingers to push the key down or allow it to fall down. Just making sure everything's down. I, I looked up. There are no wrinkles or bubbles. And then if you need to use your ruler to press things in place, a wooden edge ruler will gently press these pieces down. I had no trouble, so I didn't even get to show you how to troubleshoot if you had a wrinkle. Everything went down great. Then I'm just going to randomly add my butterflies where I feel like maybe they want to be. Here and there, flying around. You see that beautiful key? That just looks Victorian to me. It also looks a little bit like Valentine's Day, so you could definitely use this for Valentine's Day. All right, so now time to put that down. Look how beautiful the color of the frame looks with that. I love it. All right, so I'm going to use this cording that came from Dollar Tree. That's what I chose to go with it. 
I'm going to start putting these the piece down with a little bit of hot glue on the blocks that we're using for support. I'm using hot glue rather than the cool temp because I want to make sure I have time to slide it if I don't get it in the right position. Press it into place. I'm going to lift up just enough so that I can reach my next pieces of support. And I'll gently put that down. Don't want to pull too hard. You don't want any uh, relaxed areas in this either. You want this to be sharp and flat. So I'm just carefully going to just give it a little pressure on the end as I pull downward until it's glued into place. I'm going to grab that. I think that's like a cotton trim. I'm going to leave the end a little fluffy, a little boho looking. And I'm going to lay it down where we're going to be gluing it in place right in that corner. I know you can't see, but crust, I'm right in the corner with that knot. I'm going to follow the line here that is overlapping in between the paper and the frame. I don't want this to be a curvy line, so I'm going to keep it as straight as possible. Continue along until the entire side is done when you get to the corner you're just going to round that corner add a little glue okay then once you got the corner laid down you can go ahead and do a longer line of glue so how did everybody do through this little storm that we recently had this this snow and stuff did y'all have any damage were you stuck in your house i know i have northern friends and southern friends here we personally did not get any snow in southern Alabama. However, we did have like a icy mix and we still have little icy pieces in the shady areas of my porch. My kids are thrilled because it crunches when they walk on it. You know, kids, easy to please. All right, so this is how it is going to look once you got it finished. I love the look of it. Here are the three pieces that we did today that are Victorian expire, inspired and they are also um, possibly Valentine's Day. Who knows? I'm thinking with the mood lighting here, it definitely gives a bit of a romantic look. It's our little lamp. I want to give you a big hand clap. If you have been staying with me in these videos that are on the longer side, I did do a poll and I saw that a lot of people and the majority of people prefer videos between 30 minutes and an hour of my content so I'm stretching it for y'all hope you stay with me through the entire video I'm showing you here how you can decorate that little wall piece down there with candles look at the brightness in this look at that now like I said it's a little bit dimmer now because I accidentally left my light on but you can see you get the picture you could even do two strands of lights in there to make it brighter here's the decor around that piece this is I think a beautiful way to display your Valentine's or something in your room. You could also flip it over, put your hangers on the back and place it on the wall and make it lovely. Think of ways that you can reuse things that maybe aren't typical or how you would normally see them. I find that helpful when I'm doing thrift flips. Look at the piece, see what you can do with it, see what it comes to mind and then see what kind of a difference you can make. Give it new life. Somebody wants to love it and it can be loved again. I thank you so much today for stopping by and for giving me support. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Bye.